that we did it 20 years ago, the people were, including myself, were afraid of failure. Uh -huh. Like failure loomed over the process. But in doing it twice, you see that <coughs> failure is not an option really unless you're just totally messed up. So if people can be relieved <coughs> that we're not gonna fail in this, we may get a shorter term or whatever, but you take that fear of failure off the table, people are like relaxed. They, but they, the first time we looked at it, like, man, if we fail, we're gonna lose our retirement, our jobs, and our kids are gonna be on the street, and, you know. Uh, it, is there a way to reassure the staff yeah. and the people that this I've is- I've been at this uh, 30 plus years now, and in my whole career, I think I remember one, maybe two schools whose accreditation was denied. In, in 30s, maybe there's more, but not, not very many more. But even at that point, they just but I mean, that's somebody, that's somebody that, you know, they weren't following the curriculum. They, you know, they didn't have in, uh, teachers who had credentials or endorsements. Uh, you know, they just basically weren't an admin school. From my, my perspective, the easiest way to fail the evaluation is to blow up the, the, uh, Self-study. If you, if we come in as a team and we see, and this has happened to all of us, one guy sat down and wrote it in a week and sent it in. Yeah, and, and it's obvious that you, you talk to the board and they say, what? Yeah. And, and you look at the action plans and you look at that and they say, who in the <coughs> world wrote that? Because we don't agree with it. We're gonna walk off your campus and say, we'll be back next year for a full evaluation and you better do it right here on probation. That's the way to fail. Right. But if you if you take a look at your program and you and you report what you see, right. and again I would say don't try and gloss over. Uh, one of the things we've noticed is that people figured out that they're going to get a recommendation in a standard if they put twos. Okay. Remember back where you make the rating, not met, partially met, met, exceptionally met. If you put a one or a two down there, you're likely to get some kind of a recommendation. But don't gloss it over just so you don't get a recommendation in the future. If, if the reality is that you partially met it, tell us what's happening right now. That's going to be a lot stronger positive message for us than if you gave yourself all fours and we come in and say, man, what planet were they on when they evaluated themselves? We're going to say you don't have the capacity to self-evaluate. So it's more important to say what's happening. If you've got a wart, tell us about it before we get there. We'll find it anyway. And you look stronger for being able to say, here's the areas we're working on. And you can write an action plan for those areas and beat us to the punch of writing a recommendation. Then our recommendation is follow your action plan related to this standard. And that's an affirmation for you, kind of a backhanded recommendation. It's a way to say, hey, you figured it out yourself. Just go get it done. Uh, there was a question in the back. If, I have, if I'm in the process of doing my evaluation and, there, um, and I have a strategic plan for my school, can I use that instead of doing an action plan? OK, the question is, can you use a strategic plan for your school in place of a of school-wide improvement action plans? I would say yes. If it's, if it's comprehensive, you might add a, a school-wide improvement action plan to that if you haven't been totally comprehensive or if your strategic plan is a year or two old. Again, follow what the study committees and the coordinating committee find. You may find some gaps in your strategic plan as you go through the self-study process. I would say, you know, if you've got a comprehensive school-wide strategic plan, for me, I would accept that for action plans. But if I find some other areas you've missed, I might recommend that you write an additional action plan in those areas as, as a visiting committee member. And I'd add to that, if I was chairing that committee, I want to know when that strategic plan was written. If it was written 10 years ago and it's the same strategic plan and you haven't implemented it in the last 10 years or five years, then I'm going to say no, that strategic, action, that strategic plan will not meet the action plans because you haven't followed through on it. Number two, I would go through and say in the, in the action plans, I would actually say action plan number one, 
and write what the issue is and see strategic plan, page, whatever. So that we knew that you didn't just say, well, we've written a general strategic plan that covers everything, and so don't we're going to blow off the whole. You know what your issues are. There's going to be key issues. We, as the committee, we're going to we're going to find those key issues, and if you've identified those in a statement and tell us where to look in the strategic plan, that's a stronger stance than just say, here's my strategic plan, I'm not worrying about any action plans. Uh, good advice. One thing that we haven't done much in the Adventist system that WASP does effectively, I think, and uh, I'll be talking to Larry more about this, but WASP requires that the visiting committee chair have contact with people on campus before the visit. And actually, in WASP, the visiting committee chair visits the campus during the self-study process and provides some input to them. Now, we've done a really good thing end up having to call. It'd be great if I got a call from the principal six months ahead and said, hey, we're excited you're coming. Uh, you know, we're working on our, on our self-study. We think we're, our target date for being done is this. Uh, if you're coming by, come by and we'll show you what we've got so far. Uh, you know, those kinds of things, that openness is going to make a difference when I get to your campus. So again, a way to inter interact with your visiting committee is through the chair ahead of time. If you have any questions about the process, that's a good person to talk to because they're the ones that are going to lead the group that looks at your self-study. Another question. that they like the PDF format. Um, we debated that a long time. And uh, we decided on PDF because uh, of the printing problems. With Word, you know, every printer does it differently and the pagination gets fouled up and all that. So we went to the PDF format. As I mentioned, the first draft had only small boxes on some of the standards. We've since added a whole page, a full page behind that. Now maybe if you need more than that, you'll have to just add a page. Oh. Their, their standard size, like the professional growth chart for staff, they don't expand. Yeah, and, and we have we've addressed that problem. In the new draft, as Kelly said, we're rewriting all the documents right now. In the new um, draft, we have, you can click on a button, add a set, another page. Add another page. That's wonderful. Um, so that's, but I want to tell you that we made some of the boxes small on purpose. We don't want a book. I mean, why, you know, we have people that write five, six, seven pages. Well, we go to sleep before we're done. You know, it's not a dissertation. <laughs> Good. Good advice, Larry. Uh, I promised we'd be done in less than an hour and a half. Uh, in the visiting committee handbook, I want to, to highlight just a couple things. In the visiting committee handbook, uh, there's some in information about action plans and what happens with those. Uh, it talks about membership of the visiting committee. I mentioned that before. There are some writing tips in there. And if you're ever asked to be on a visiting committee, uh, there are writing tips that will help you to write recommendations. Some chairs want you to begin pre-writing before you get to the campus. I'm not a big one on that. I don't like it when, I guess it's that story I told you, where they just, where we wrote a commendation, they wrote one, so on. I, re I re repulsed by that. And so I typically tell my committee, let's wait till we get there and verify these. But some chairs want you to do some writing ahead of time, some good tips on how to do that. Uh, the terms, we've talked about the terms, and I want to briefly mention the terms on page 22 of the visiting committee handbook, and page 23 are the, the summary of the terms. There's a six-year term with a progress report. That's the best term you can get. You write progress reports, I believe, in the second and fourth years. If you are an exemplary school, you're going to get six with a, a six PR, which is with progress reports. Nobody comes back. You have the capacity to run your school with two progress reports during the term. The most common term that schools get is a six-year term with an interim review. You'll get a six-year with annual written progress reports, 
that are sent to your conference office and the NAD.